Hello, pilots of the internet. Welcome to Foldable Flight. My name is Kyle, and this is where I teach you how to fold paper airplanes that will blow your mind. In this video, I am teaching you the tube. And yes, if you can tell, my voice is a little bit different than usual. I have a pretty bad cold, but I'm pushing through just for you guys. <laughs> now, uh, the tube is actually designed by John Collins, the world record holder for paper airplane distance. This is part of a collaboration I did with him called World Record Fold and Fly Planes, where we took eight of John's very best designs, planes that boomerang back to you, planes that flap as they fly, the world record paper airplane herself, and some others, and I designed illustrated templates for each of those planes so that when you fold them, they can look beautiful like this rather than a plain white sheet of paper. Now, if you purchase that, you will get three copies of each template, and uh, you can get that at foldableflight.com or the paperairplaneguy.com. Now, last week, you guys got to vote on which plane you wanted to see this week, and you overwhelmingly said it was the tube. And I'm going to give you guys a chance now, look in that top right corner for a card, to vote on the plane you want to see next week. And you can also find John Collins' channel up in that card as well. Now, I will show you guys how this plane flies, and then I will pass it over to John to show you how to fold it. circuit are really unusual and it generates its stability from how fast it's spinning so you kind of roll it off your hand like that spin it as it's flying forward uh, really easy to make and uh, nobody ever thinks this thing is gonna fly so it's a surprising kind of plane what you want to do is start with the tube paper this is the side that you want down of course the instructional side up and the arrow on top and the first thing we're gonna do is fold one third of the paper over. And if you're using paper that's that's not our special paper, you're just using regular paper, you, the layered part is gonna be the same size as the unlayered part when you get it folded over. So you're gonna fold over. You can follow our little dashed line if you're using our paper. Otherwise, just use, uh, just kind of rough it in there. The layered part gonna be about the same size as the unlayered part. And then uh, once you've got the first fold made, I'm gonna push in just a little bit here and we're gonna fold the layered part in half, which is just taking this top down to this edge. The paper can be a little bit slippery as you're seeing me kind of have to hold that together. I'm gonna to flip it over this way just so I can get a little bit better grip to fold that layered part in half. There we go, layered part in half. And then one more time, we're gonna fold the layered part in half. So take the top edge down to this new edge here. Missed my edge just a little bit on that corner there. There we go. Okay, nice sharp crease, lots of layers going on there. You could use a folding tool for that or just really crease it hard with your thumbnail. And then what you're gonna wanna do is rub this guy over the corner of a table like that, getting that kind of a thing going there. So I'm just rubbing it over the corner of my table. And now I've got a curve going here. This is what you want. You want a nice curve. Uh, this guy should stand up a little bit for you. You know, you could shoot the, the paper's curving. We're getting ready to tuck this whole thing together. So uh, if you let's put the colored side up for just a moment. If you're right handed, this is how you're going to want to uh, put the plane together. If you're left handed, do the opposite end. So I'm starting with the colored side up, the crease side on top. This is the raw edge on the bottom. And if in this orientation, the left side, you're going to open up just the last crease that we made, the last time we folded that layered part in half, we're opening up that crease. And then I want you to look in on one end here. Let me just make sure I've got focus here solidly on this end as we do this. So you're gonna open that up, partially open the first time you folded the layered part in half. And then what you're gonna do, you can see you've got a corner here and a corner here, and then you've got this folded corner down here. Uh, open that up and then you're gonna wrap the other end around the same direction you were curving this guy. You're gonna wrap it around and you're gonna put the other end inside that opening there. So again, 
if you're right-handed, if you're left-handed, you're going to open this side. I'll explain why that is in just a moment. But if you're right-handed, you're opening up this side. We were here. We unfold the last time we folded the layered part in half. And then we open up so that you've got one corner. The two raw corners are on one side of your finger. And then the creased corner is on the other. Wrap it around. All the layers are on the inside. And then you're going to put this just inside there. You see how the two corners are on one side and the layered corner is on the other side. Then you're just going to remake this crease that goes all around the plane. The one that we unfolded. You're going to remake that. You're going to go around in a circle. Remaking that crease. And then just kind of go around that. That remaking that crease is going to lock it together right there. And you can see how much I put it in there. I put it in there maybe an inch and a half. Not quite two inches. A little bit more than an inch. If you're doing metric, that's you know 28 to 30 millimeters or so. Then you've got this band around the backside. The unlayered part. Just kind of follow that black band around there and tuck that layer to the inside. So you're just kind of going around the back of the plane, folding some of it to the inside, just enough to hold the back layers together and make a nice smooth crease there. You're just going around it. And you can see it's, it's not that difficult to get this guy rounded out and looking good. Now, why would you want to overlap the layers differently for right and left? Okay, so this is a right-handed tube. And as it spins this way, you can see that as it's spinning, if I'm right-handed, I throw it like that and it spins that way, the layer is not going to interfere with the spin. If I'm left-handed, it would spin this way and kind of scoop into the air a little bit. And this will affect really longer flights. You don't have to be so concerned if you're not working in a really big space. But if you're left-handed and you tuck the other end inside, when it's spinning, it won't be scooping at air. It'll be slipping through the air more smoothly. So that's the difference between a right-handed one and a left-handed one. Same paper works for both. The same paper looks great for both. But there is the tube.